Good evening. Welcome to Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, February 8th, 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Mr. Draper? Here. Ms. Edsel? Present. Mr. Jensen? Present. Mayor Abawasli? Here. Ms. Ms. Gedalia? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Mr. Sternan? Present. This time we have a moment of silence. Thank you. Today we have two proclamations, and I will come down. Okay, our first proclamation um, is regarding home rule. So, whereas home rule is essential to effective and responsive <coughs> municipal governance in Iowa and provides flexibility oh. to make decisions at the local level, where decisions are made closest to the people they impact and can be tailored to fit local conditions, needs, and concerns in order to better serve taxpayers. And whereas the City of Marion supports home rule and the powers it provides to make local decisions that best reflect the residents of our community, and whereas the citizens of Iowa approved the adoption of home rule in the Constitution of Iowa on November 5, 1968, and whereas this is the 50th year of municipal home rule in Iowa, and whereas home rule continues to be vital to the health and prosperity of all cities in Iowa, now, therefore, I, Nicholas Abu Asili, Mayor of the City of Marion, Iowa, do recognize the 50th anniversary of M municipal home rule in Iowa and proudly support its continued authority. Our second, our second proclamation is honoring Black History Month. And I think we have someone here to, are you here to accept it? Okay, well, great. Danielle? Come up. Over here. Okay. So, oh, can you stay right here? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can't. Okay. So, whereas during Black History Month we celebrate the many achievements and contributions made by African Americans to our economic, cultural, spiritual, and political development, and whereas Black History Month grew out of the establishment in 1926 of Negro History Week by Carter G. Woodson <coughs> and the Association for the Study of American, African American Life and History. And whereas the 2018 national theme for the observance is African Americans in times of war and honors the brave individuals who served our country and made sacrifices to defend the American ideals of freedom and democracy. And whereas the observance of Black History Month calls our attention to the continued need to battle racism and build a society that lives up to its democratic ideals. And whereas the City of Marion continues to work toward becoming an inclusive community in which all citizens, past, present, and future, are respected and recognized for their contributions and potential contributions to our community, the state, the country, and the world. And whereas the City of Marion is proud to honor the history and contributions of African Americans in our community throughout our state and nation. Now, therefore, in recognition of African Americans, past and present, in our community, I, Nicholas Abuasili, Mayor of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim February 2018 to be Black History Month. 
I encourage all citizens to celebrate our diverse heritage and culture and continue our efforts to create a world that is more just, peaceful, and prosperous for all. So Danielle is here to accept this on behalf of uh, the well, the Marian Civil Rights Commission. The Civil Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And go. then can I get a photo? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Take charge there, Danielle. Okay, moving on with the agenda. Mr. Draper. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I, uh, I have the consent agenda, which consists of items 1 through 32 and resolution 26617 and 226664. I have then asked to exclude items 28A, 3C, 16, 18, 19, and 20 for separate consideration. Your Honor, I would also like to uh, respectfully request a poll number 24, please, for further discussion. Okay, so we'll second it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, there was no second no. Would you like me to repeat, Your Honor? Could you repeat I that? I, yeah. I think I can, we are, I can repeat it. We are removing now items number 24, 28A, 3C, and 16, 18, 19, and 20. And, yeah, number one. With number those one. Oh, okay. 16, 18, 20. Uh, number one is, in fact, you said yeah, number number yeah. one is the 16, 18, 19, right. 20. It's the dates of the right. minutes. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's what you're January 16th, 18, 19, and 20. Yeah, gotcha. so item number one. So it's gotcha. one. <laughs> no? Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent calendar. Um, I <laughs> I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> Items 1 through 32. 32. And resolutions 26617 through 26662. Six, no, I'm sorry. 64. 26664. But excluding 3C, 28A, and 24. And excluding in, in number one. Oh, just all of number one. And excluding number one. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. So those number one, 3C, 28A, and 24 are going to be discussed separately. All right. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. So, would you like to make the motion for number one? Yes. Um, I was getting ready for three. Um, I would make a motion in the consent calendar. We approve the minutes from the January 16th City Council meeting. Okay. Doing them all individually. Pardon me? Well, you can just, you can do the whole thing. I'm just going to abstain from the whole thing yeah. for the ease of purpose. So I'm just approving the minutes. Yeah. So. 18, 19, 20 through. For all of them. So you're, okay. Yeah. Okay. Say the whole thing. Do I have a second? So, second. <laughs> okay. Was your motion to approve all those minutes? Six, 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 six. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to approve 
the minutes of January 16th, 18th, 19th, and 20th, 2018 City Council meetings. Discussion. I just want to explain that I'm abstaining because I wasn't in attendance for three of those. I did read them, but I just, it's my own thing that I don't approve uh, minutes that I wasn't able to be part of the discussion for. So I'll be abstaining, that's why. Okay. Further discussion? All right. <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And one abstention. One abstention. Thanks. <coughs> Your Honor, I ask, I ask that uh, item C be excluded. <coughs> so do you want to make the motion? Does somebody want to make the motion to approve 3C first before we discuss it? Uh, 3C is a renewal application for a Class C liquor license with additional privileges for outdoor services and Sunday sales in Marion Post Number 298, DBA, Marion Veterans Club, 625 31st Street. The expiration is 228-18. No violations the past five years. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to approve um, the consent agenda item 3C, renewal of application for Class C liquor license for outdoor service and Sunday sales for Marion Post number 298, Marion Veterans Club. Discussion? I, I'm the one who took that off because I am a member of the Legion and I, my dues are held down because of liquor sales, so I, I'm not going to be voting on it. Okay. Other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. And I abstain. And one abstention. Okay. Number 24. Bill. Are you 24? No. Was that me? What was the question? 24. That was you. Yes, I pulled 24. Will someone make the motion? Sure, Your Honor. I move that we approve resolution number 26659. <coughs> Accepting the Central Corridor Complete Streets and Capacity Improvements Roundabout at 7th Ave and 7th Street Project, STP-A-4775-627-86-5. Second. It's been moved and seconded <coughs> to approve resolution number 26659, accepting the Central Corridor Complete Streets and Capacity Improvements Roundabout at 7th and 7th. Discussion. Yes, Your Honor, I had, uh, at my request, I had this one pulled. <coughs> we have uh, uh, been given in light uh, today the, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, but we have submitted all of our uh, documentation um, to the state for the completion of the 7th and 7th roundabout. <coughs> and uh, our acting city engineer director, Mark, Mike Barkelow, brought this to our attention today, but the city and the department has been given the extinction, uh, the, uh, uh, distinction. the honor of receiving this award. I'll read it to you. It's the from the Iowa Concrete Paving Association <coughs> Award of Excellence presented to the City of Marion in recognition of outstanding design and construction on 7th Avenue Roundabout and 7th Street Marion, Iowa's best municipal streets, intersections, PCC paving project 15,000 square yards, 2017. So this, uh, without further ado, is a, an incredible um, uh, recognition. It's a sign of the level of services that this department, the individuals that pl put all their blood, sweat, and tears into this project. So not only did we complete that uh, project, but uh, it was awarded that distinction. So. Without further ado, I would like to recognize uh, Mike in your department. Congratulations. Do you want to get a photograph of Mike with the paper cut or can I get it on this? Right now? Yeah. I think, it, I think uh, another note to make to give everybody on this is to let you know the amount of paperwork <laughs> that went into this project with the federal funding. 
is usually you fill a couple of notebooks this thick. Mike, how many notebooks did you have? Twelve, Twelve that thick. So on this project, the amount of paperwork was six times the normal project just to get through all of the red tape. So we appreciate the effort and the due diligence it really took to complete that project. Okay, well, we still have a motion on the floor, so, or did we, did somebody make the motion? We motioned. Yeah, we so, yeah. all right, so, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. We have one more, 28. Your Honor, I also requested 28A be removed consent. Uh, it's the final plant for Mid-America, first edition of Lynn County, for property located at 2980 East Post Road, Lynn County, Iowa, and it's requested by a Scott Draper. <laughs> Second. And I will abstain from that. Okay. But you're okay making the motion? Yes, I feel okay. comfortable with that. All those in f oh, we have a, sec a motion and a second to approve item 28A, the final plat for Mid-American First Edition to Lynn County. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. And the motion passes. Ms. Hetzel? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve the consent calendar with Mayor Abu Afalit extension from voting and discussion <coughs> regarding the following items as presented. Item number 33 through 36, resolution number 26665 through 26668. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on these four items? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. And abstention. Abstention. Okay, and one abstention. Next, I'd like to move for resolution number two. Move for resolution number 26669, setting a public hearing for March 8, 2018, regarding the proposed fiscal year 2018-2019 budget. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26669, setting the public hearing for March 8, 2018, on the proposed fiscal year 2018 19 budget. Discussion? Yeah, for purposes of clarification, I know we have two other dates that have been talked about. One is a publication deadline by Wes, and then another one is a state deadline. So, could we clarify what those dates are so I make sure I have those correct? The state filing is due on March 15th. Okay. However, we have to have it in the times between, I can't remember what exactly the day is, but it will be published, should be 14 days prior to the public hearing. So we will have a publication sent that will have basically that certification page of the budget in the paper. Okay. 14 days prior to March 8th. Correct. All right. Thank you. Okay. Other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. At this time, we have a public hearing regarding amendment of access fees related to the ordinance number 17 24 for the 2015 Winslow Road District. Like a staff report? The public hearing is open. Would you like a staff report? Please. So basically, when this ordinance was originally established on October 5th of 17, there was a script error and a, a number was duplicated twice instead of the, the new number put in there. So the number for the Excelsior Middle School was $217,591.30 instead of being the correct number of $285,331.16. Because this is about $70,000, we wanted to go ahead and correct that. In order to do that, we have to go through the public hearing and three readings to change the ordinance. Okay. Is that clear? 
Yep. Mm -hmm. I just had a question. Have we alerted the school district about this error so that they're aware? This they they know what their hookup fees yeah. were. It was just put in wrong when it was typed up. Okay. Other discussion? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. There's no discussion. Uh, is there anybody here who uh, is uh, who wants to speak in favor of this measure? Anyone here to speak in opposition? Okay, seeing that there's none, the public hearing is closed. So. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I move, uh, make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-01, amending chapter 100A of the Code of Ordinances regarding amendment of access fees for ordinance number 17-24. 100A.14, 2015, Winslow Road District, initial consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 18-01, amending chapter 100A of the Code, Code of Ordinances regarding amendment of access fees for ordinance number 17-24, Winslow Road District, initial consideration. Discussion now. None? None. Okay. All those in favor of ordinance number 18-01, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. We have another, another public hearing regarding the 2018 sidewalk assessment project. Public hearing is now open. Is there anything to present other than what we had on Tuesday? or? No. Basically, this is just the proposed sidewalk that's going to be along the east side of 29th Street from 12th Avenue as far north as possible. Um, the plats have gone out. I don't know if there's anyone in the audience that would like to, to speak about the project, but it basically it goes from 12th Avenue to between 18th and 19th Avenue. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of the sidewalk assessment project? Anyone here to speak in opposition of the 2018 sidewalk assessment project? Okay, the public hearing is now closed. Mr. Brandt. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve the project calendar regarding the 2018 sidewalk assessment project, um, items A through E, which include resolutions 26670 through 26674. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the project calendar regarding the 2018 sidewalk assessment project, with resolutions numbers 26670 through 26674. Any discussion? Do we need to do those individually or can we do it that way? All together as a group? Okay, okay. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say something just because we spent quite a bit of time on this Tuesday, so for anybody who's here who cares um, to hear it, so I, I learned that we actually lose money um, a bit as a city doing this assessment and we're trying to figure out how to be efficient and cost effective and get these done and so I just think it's um, this is the way it's been done and that's how we're doing it but I do think that we kind of all decided that um, if there's a better way then we want to try to look at what that better way is and so um, you know we have the plan for this year but um, I do I would like to continue to talk about or hear recommendations um, going forward for next year about what might be done um, to be more efficient so that the sidewalks go in because I, I feel like they're a necessity, um, but that we can be as cost uh, effective as possible. And I don't know if that's um, lumping it into a, a bond, you know, budgeting okay. for it or, you know, what other cities are doing, but I do think it's just worth pointing out that we spent some time on this. Um, on Tuesday, and it was it was a bigger part of the discussion, just because it's pretty quiet up here now. But we talked about this at length. I think the other note we should probably mention as well is that the amount that is spent on these sidewalks has been increasing year after year. So that's been increasing from what kind of levels, Mike? 
Yeah, it used to be $32,000 was our budget. Our budget now is 97.5, so it has dramatic, drastically come up, um, and we will continue to ask for those increases. So I'm going to go to budget and talking about those. Lon and I did have a quick conversation of maybe we lump three years together and do three years at once, and then it's a $300,000 project, and then we would do better at that amount of paperwork. And so you'd be budgeting the same amount. You would just do one project every three years. That would be a larger project. Yeah, and that might be a good solution. And I don't mean to jump in other than to say I'm not saying that I believe anybody's at fault for that. I just want to point out that we discussed it and asked about it. And um, I always think it's something we're going to scrutinize. Always good to yeah. see if there's a better way to do things. Sure. So, yeah. Other discussion? I think I was just going to say I think it's something that we should look into and in the near future how we handle them. Okay. Further discussion on this? None. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to approve the project calendar regarding 2018 sidewalk assessment project, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion passes. Mr. You know, uh, Your Honor, this will be uh, uh, my motion to approve resolution number 26591, approving the new organizational chart that was originally tabled back on January 4th, 2018. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26591, approving the new organizational chart. Discussion. Yeah, again, we spent uh, quite a bit of time on this here. Um, I think everybody, you know, um, with the discussion, everybody had um, questions, and I think everybody feels good about this. It's due. We're growing. Um, we need to do um, something to help. I think one great point that was made was just from the legislative angle to ad ad advocate for Marion more um, in terms of getting grant money um, is a great way to... Um, use Lon's time when he's out and having more people, um, I don't know how best to describe it, but basically I think the way that things have morphed as we've grown um, and we haven't reorganized, this will allow more people to be efficient and um, better communications internally. And I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of it actually, um, having had all the detailed discussions and having my questions answered. So I appreciate everyone's patience and tabling it for the new people and saving it for us um, going forward, and I look forward to seeing the benefits. Good. Okay. Other discussion? Uh, the, the only comment I have there is that, and we mentioned it to Lon, hopefully uh, midway through the year, the deputy city manager will have some dots running down to other chores. I think it's something we need to do and have to do looking forward to the three to five years and plus five it makes you appreciate our growth and what we need to do to continue so I'm greatly in favor of it okay other discussion all those in favor of resolution number two six five nine one please say aye. aye aye all those opposed please say no motion passes uh, at this time we have uh, citizen presentations or comments if there are any Is there anyone here to address the council on any topic okay seeing that there are none we will move on to council discussion time so we start with Randy Thank you. Um, just I want, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to kind of point out a couple things here. I've had the uh, distinct pleasure this week or this month to uh, uh, attend a meeting back on the 23rd. That's our feasibility study for the consolidated 911. Uh, I was invited by uh, uh, Police Chief McHale. Um, I want to thank you for that. Um, very educational. I kind of thought um, being affiliated with other uh, emergency responses with our city that I was. Um, up to speed on that and in fact uh, I couldn't have been farther from the truth so this is something that I think our city will really want to uh, take a look at I know I'm going to get behind this um, there's obviously a lot of discussion a lot of topics 
This is something that's not going to um, uh, be a quick process, um, but uh, to see the need is incredible. To see the, the studies, uh, how many people we need to run it, how our people are being handled uh, today, the delays that are out there um, from the time that a, a 911 call is made. These are all things that should be very concerning for us. Um, we're doing very well with it, but we can always be tweaking things. So as we take a look at those, as our city builds out, our time of responses will take longer. Um, this is something that um, uh, it's going to be very easy for me to get passionate about. So I'm going to be in favor of moving forward with this, and I know uh, there's a lot to do there, Chief. Um, uh, it's not just our city and not just our our uh, citizens that work with this. It will be a, a county-wide process. So I'm looking forward to that. I also attended another meeting on the same day, the 23rd, on the hazard uh, mitigation plan, uh, local committee. I was very impressed with these. Um, I've had the honor to sit in on this meeting as well, too. There's so many behind-the-scenes things that our citizens do not see that I am very impressed with with each one of these meetings that I go to. This one here is actually how does our city uh, look at and how do we respond to uh, focus points on things in the future, things that we've done in the past, what can we do better again for our citizens, uh, citizens of the community, so, or community. So I, again, I appreciate those. I can't make all the meetings, but I do appreciate the ones I can uh, make it to. Um, I, I will, as well as maybe uh, some other council members, be attending the, uh, uh, the state of the city, as Paul says, to the west. So we'll be uh, seeing what's going on uh, over there. That will actually be occurring on um, February 28th. Also, uh, Lon, do you have an update for us as to who uh, our deputy city manager is in your absence yet at this point? Uh, Amanda will be the primary acting. I've got one person left to talk to uh, for naming a second one. Um, one of the things that we always look for on that is having at least two people because Amanda and I, for example, often attend the same conferences. So we need to have somebody else that can step in in the case where we're both out of the office. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. I'm good tonight. Um, yeah, I'm not going to rehash everything that Randy said, but I too attended the <coughs> consolidation meeting um, at, at Chief McHale's invitation, and I am, a, it's something I'm going to be behind too. I feel like um, all of the factors are right for us to do this. It's something that the state is actually encouraging. Um, I'm happy to have gotten in at this point to hear the consultants um, debriefing, if you will, and there were members of Hiawatha and Cedar Rapids, obviously Marion, um, at this meeting. And so I'm glad that we're getting in at the beginning to get this knowledge. And um, some of us will be attending um, a field trip, if you will, to Scott County to look at their consolidated center so that we can talk to people who are doing this. This will be, I think, before our next work session or something of that nature. But I look forward to continuing to learn more about it and see how we can continue to make the community um, a safer place. So thank you for that. I also want to just um, give a little feedback from council hours. People have, um, at the couple that I've been to, asked questions, and I tell them I'm going to share it, so I'm just going to put it out there. Um, someone came and asked about the fireworks hours and was thrilled with what we came up with. Um, another person asked about leaf pickup. And um, that's something I'll probably want to just learn more about, but I can do that, Ryan, at a one-on-one -on -one time because I didn't really know how to answer her question. Um, and then at another one, um, the bar ordinance that's being under consideration, we haven't gotten any information uh, um, as council yet. I know it's coming. <coughs> I know that information is being gathered and people are being spoken to, and I appreciate um, that effort being organized. Someone did have some concerns, and I'm sure um, when we have that discussion, I'll bring that up at that point. Um, we were asked about the sale of the Carnegie Building, and if we would consider bringing that um, into our books and buying it in the name of historical preservation. I didn't know how to answer that. I don't know <laughs> if that's, uh, I'm just sharing that. And then the last thing was just some concerns about um, the why, and I, I'm grateful to the information session um, that I was able to attend at the WISE. Uh, I think they've invited all of us over the last 
week or two to kind of bring us up to speed and have promised more updates. Hopefully, um, we all in the community will see and hear a lot more about that as this push to really make it happen um, comes to fruition because it's an exciting project. Um, but there's still a lot of information out there and um, funds to be raised. So those were the things that have come up um, at the council hours at the library. While people only trickle in, it does seem to be worthwhile to have a presence there um, because people, I think, feel um, it's informal and they can talk to you about things and then some people just stumble upon you and then they, um, then they just think of stuff to talk to you about. But at any rate, it's good to, um, to have that as a venue. So I'm grateful to have gone. That's it. Uh, speaking of the library, Paul and I will be manning the library this Saturday morning. Uh, whether there's six inches of snow or, or none, we'll be there uh, with our boots on. Uh, the other thing to really let people know is, you know, we've got this public hearing coming up in March, March 8th, for our budget. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, for a Friday afternoon and all day Saturday, uh, the entire city council and many, many staff people spent that day and a half talking about the budget. Uh, so I got that 160-page document a week before, was able to go through it once in detail and kind of focus on the funds that I thought were most important. Uh, this being my first budget as a city council person, I would have to say I feel I got a pretty decent handle about the budget, but it is so voluminous uh, and it's very complicated, so it's going to take more time get a handle on it, but I'm a numbers guy by background, being a CPA and working on uh, responsible for the budget at, at Freud Vector for 30 years. So I know what they're all about. I enjoy them. I like digging into the numbers. So I've started doing some of that with some different groups. And those that have not seen me at your office, you will be seeing me. <laughs> so I do look forward to that and I enjoy those discussions because uh, it makes me, I think, a better city council person as I find out more of the details uh, and certainly as you talk to the different people in the city, you really get a sense of their commitment and dedication. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Paul, I'm sure, is well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a couple things. I made an error on Tuesday's meeting uh, when you talk about the budget, Councilman, uh, that Marion currently is the her third highest millage rate in the county. And I was wrong. We are the fourth behind Cedar Rapids, Hiawatha, Springville, and then comes Marion. And we are 222nd in the state. So we're starting on pretty good grounds on the budget as we move forward. The thing I had in our newspaper today, if you'd all look at this photograph of our downtown, enjoying history as I do, it brought about a building of which Amanda is going to show us and see how many people recognize that building. Foster. That building later became <laughs> Foster's Furniture. <coughs> it was built it was built in 1855 as the largest brick building in Marion. In 1860 it uh, was still the only brick building in Uptown Marion. It had in it, in addition to a hotel, a tailor shop, a general store, a jewelry store, and a hardware store, <coughs> which years later become Price Hardware in that location. In 1858, it had a meat market in the basement, and it was called the Washington Building. In 1873, it became uh, an advanced hotel, and it was called Park Place. The hotel itself had a uh, second floor dining room that seated 200 people and the kitchen area. In 1886, the Daniel family bought that facility, and it was known as the Daniel Hotel and they had their grand opening on Thanksgiving Day in 1888. In the dining room, they served 200 people at the cost of two bucks. 
So uh, the rooms rented for $2, and that included meals. In the 1880s, the only place to bathe was in the barber shop back room in the basement of the hotel. So travelers would come in, and in their room, they would have a pitcher of water, a dish, a wash towel, a bar of soap, and that would be as close as you could get unless you were to pay the money, go down to the barber shop, and go in the back where they had a heated tub of water for you. The uh, rooms were unheated. The strange thing I read was that in the summer, they had straw mattresses. And in the winter, they had feather mattresses to try to take care of the heat and, and the cold. The, um, they had no bellboys. As the trains come in in the 1880s, they brought a lot of salespeople with them who would bring their wares to the hotel, and they had a big room there that they'd rent, and they could call in the hardware store or whomever they wanted to look, it over, look over their wares. In 1890, they put in a steam laundry at that location, which brought about some steam heat in the rooms. In 1891, they put that fourth floor on the back. In 1892, they had to take it off because the foundation would not support it. <laughs> they also, at that time, made the hotel building a two-story building. The Daniels closed its door in 1918 and it became Hotel Griffith for a while, and they closed it up in 1924. In 1921, they rented the first section of that building for a furniture store. In 1924, a Ludwig Bolster bought that furniture store, and it was Bolster's furniture along with his sons, Don and Vern, until the 1990s. And I just... You know how I feel about history, Mayor, and I, I hate to take a lot of time, but we have a certain lot of council time that we can utilize for what purpose we like. Bear with me, people, because well, I'm you... not done. Oh. <laughs> I'm done tonight. Oh. <laughs> I hope you continue do, do, doing this because I, I enjoy it. I think a lot of us do, and um, it's, it's certainly um, information we would never have access to. And I always... Uh, Tell our library director, you know, we we need to have human books in the library where people can check out an hour with you and learn all this history. <laughs> I'm curious. So, well, we have the Oxley's books in the library. We had a, a gentleman here by the name of Norman Waffle, who was a book salesman, and he has an interview uh, for the Gazette in later years that. I wish we could get a copy of for the library because he is full of history. And thank God for someone like who writes it down, you know, like Marvin Oxley did. Uh, so we have a history of our community. I'm curious if, Paul, did you insure the building back in 1860? I, no. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. And that's no. another lesson, but we didn't start till <laughs> night. 1902. 1902, you're insuring it. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that, that next block, uh, if you go to the park, go to, there's a depot in the park that came there out in 1888 at its original site. But if you go to the park and look across the road at the dates on all the buildings, they're almost all the same because that block burned down and many of those buildings originally were framed. Oh, and the other thing I got to tell you, in, in, in the late 1800s, they took the wooden sidewalks off from around that building and they put in concrete black and white tiles like checkerboards. When they uncover in the back of that as we do the next block of our alleyway, they'll uncover some of those because they, they were still back there. So like Copacabana. And when we put the wooden sidewalks back. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, um, thank you. For my part, uh, this morning I had a really great meeting with, with some folks from the metro area, just learning, educating myself on the issues related to homelessness and housing insecurity in the, in the area, and Marion in particular. Um, so that was, that's the beginning of a discussion that, that we're going to be having. Um, and uh, just for my purposes of educating myself and to see if if there's anything that I can personally be involved in or other uh, other council members if they want to or the city uh, in terms of addressing uh, those issues if there are needs but I'm just beginning to like I said explore that that topic um, of course we had the state of the city on the um, on the 25th 26th <laughs> <laughs> one of those two days um, and um, the response has been really great that the video is on the city website as of today uh, so people can uh, who weren't able to attend can watch it and hear all the great news that was, sh was shared um, one of the pieces of news that we shared at that uh, in that program was that beginning in March Marion will start having um, congregate meals for seniors four days a week at the library and at Lau Park. Um, that's a really great development, I think. Um, there's a lot of programming that will happen around that. Uh, so just good to see our city not only progressing in terms of um, economic development, but also in terms of serving the needs of our citizens and making sure that no one gets left behind. Um, so it's, it's, I was very proud to have have the privilege of representing the city and sharing all that great news in the in the in the state of the city luncheon and the and the uh, have have such a great response um, from the people who were there and we had a record crowd of course I think people know by now um, and so looking forward to another great year with lots of great things to share next year so thank you meetings adjourned.